graphs of polar equations. Testing the symmetric axis of a polar equation. This starts with around x axis. x axis you replace r theta by the point r negative theta or negative r pi minus theta. Take the following example. Test the symmetry axis for r equal 5 cosine 2 theta. Thus we will go for replacing r theta by r negative theta as you will see in front of you. Now, when you substitute, keep in mind that cosine theta or cosine function in general is an even function. Thus, having a negative angle will be the same as having positive. Thus, it will be symmetric on the x-axis. Thus, keep it in mind, if you have a function with cosine, then it is symmetric around the x-axis. test symmetric around the y-axis and you replace r theta by negative r comma negative theta or r by minus theta. Now take the following example. Keep in mind while you're replacing negative r and negative theta that sine function is an odd function. Thus when you replace you need to keep this fact in mind because you will end up having negative r equal negative 7 size 5 theta and the two negatives will delete each other thus you will be back to the original function. Thus, any function in the form a sine something theta, it's always symmetric around the y-axis. Any function with sine is symmetric around the y-axis. This test of symmetry, it's around the origin or the pole. And we replace r theta by negative r theta or r theta plus pi. Take the following example. We will replace r theta by negative r theta. And because of power 2, r squared, you will end up having, when you replace, you're going back to the original function. Thus, it is symmetric around the origin. You could have polar equations that have more than one symmetry. Take the following example r squared equal 4 cosine 2 theta. Now, you will notice upon testing that this equation is symmetric or uh, about x-axis, about y-axis, and about the origin. Just follow the test procedure and you will discover this. Now, pause your screen and solve those equations and compare the answers. we will speak about some important notes. We start with the first one. Sine pi minus theta is the same as sine theta. Sine negative theta is the same as negative sine theta. Cosine negative theta is the same as cosine theta. Cosine pi minus theta is the same as negative cosine theta. For r equal sine theta or r equal a plus b sine theta, it is always symmetric on y-axis. Now, if it will be with cosine theta, then it's symmetric on x-axis. Now, symmetric around the origin is the same as symmetric around the pole. Symmetric about the axis will look like this. You could see the reflection on the x-axis. Symmetric on the y-axis, the mirror will be on the y-axis. And symmetric on the pole, you will feel there is a memor, um, mirror at the origin. Okay. Polar equations of a circle. And I will start with polar equation r equal a cosine theta and a is positive. Because it's cosine and a positive, it's going to be a circle to the right with radius a over 2 and diameter a as illustrated in front of you. Maximum r value will happen at theta equal 0 and it is r equal a. Following example, r equal 8 cosine theta. Because a equal 8, this is, will be the maximum r value and it's the diameter of the circle. Now, because it's positive and with cosine theta, it's a circle to the right, and we graph it as you can see in front of you. We will move to the second type of circles when a is equal negative and we're dealing with cosine. It's going to be a circle to the left. And again, maximum value of r, you will pretend that a is positive and the diameter is a, the radius a over 2. 
Take the following example, r equal negative 12 cosine theta. Thus, the maximum r value is going to be 12 because a is negative and with cosine it's going to be circle to the left and you graph it as you can see in front of you. type of circles when r equal a sine theta and a positive it will be a circle above x axis diameter a which is maximum r value and the radius a over 2 and it will happen uh, the maximum value at theta equal 90 okay deal with this example graph r equal 14 sine theta now 14 is positive and the function is sine this it's going to be circle above the x axis uh, with the radius 7 and the diameter is 14 and the maximum r value is 14 as well again if you're dealing with r equal a sine theta but this time a is negative then it's going to be a circle below the x-axis the rest will be the same maximum r value will be the absolute value of a and you graph it as you can see in front of you Okay, graph the following, r equal negative 7 sine theta. Okay, it's a circle below the x-axis, a equal uh, negative 7. The maximum r value is the absolute value, this is equal 7. And the radius will be 3.5. And you just graph it as illustrated in front of you. Polar equation of a limason. General forms of limason curve. We start with the first type of uh, limason curves, the horizontal one, and the equation will be r equal a plus minus p cosine theta. And we have a vertical form, and the equation will be r equal a plus minus b sine theta. Illustrate the cases of the Limasson curve. First of all, we check a and b. We treat them as a positive num uh, numbers. Now, if a uh, divided by b absolutely less than one, then you are dealing with an inner lobe Limasson, and it can be horizontal. It can be also vertical. The second case, if you check the absolute value a divided by b equal one, then you are dealing with a heart, with a cardiot. And it can be both horizontal and vertical, as you can see in front of you. So the third case, if A divided by B absolutely is a value between 1 and 2, then you are dealing with a dimpled limason, as you can see the shape, how it looks like. Now, if absolute A divided by B greater or equal to, then you are dealing with a convex limason almost circular one. Let's start with the following example. Analyze r equal 4 plus 8 cosine theta. Now, a is equal 4 and b equal 8. And if we divide 4 by 8, the answer will be half. Thus, it is less than 1. Thus, our expectation for the shape will be an inner lobe limason. Now, the fact that you have cosine theta, it should be on the x-axis. The, the shape will be on the x-axis. And uh, because it's positive, uh, like we, it will be inner lobe limason that open to the right. Uh, now, we will graph it, as you can see in front of you. We make sure uh, the following values, uh, as they appear in front of you, will be. Like here at the top, on the y-axis, it will be a equal 4. At the bottom, it will be 4 down or negative 4. Uh, the first x-intercept will happen at the absolute value of a minus b, which is 4. And the second uh, x-intercept will happen at a plus b, which is going to be 12. And that gives you a clear idea about uh, the range and the maximum r value. Because you have cosine uh, theta in this uh, question, then it's symmetric on x-axis. Now, the y-intercept, as I said before, they are a equal 4, and it will be the angle 90, and a equal negative 4 or 4 down, and the angle is a 270 degree. Not that only, we will go to the domain. If I'm not mistaken, the domain should be always all real numbers. Now, I am highlighting the x-intercepts, which will be 
will happen at 4, 0, and uh, 12, 0 as well. Okay, you can see actually from the graph the x-intercept. Uh, now we will move um, to what's called the maximum r value, and it happens when cosine theta equal 1, this, the angle 0, and it's going to be 12. Minimum r value will happen uh, at theta equal 180, and it's going to be negative 4. Uh, the domain, as I said, it's all real numbers. The range will be from a minus b to a plus b. Of course, the range will be negative 4 to 12. There will be no asymptote. And by the way, this shape is bounded and continuous as well. Analyze r equal 3 minus 4 cosine theta. And again, a equal 3, b equal 4. If we divided them and we took the absolute value, it is less than 1. This, it's an inner low plimason. And it should be because of negative b, it should be open to the left. The domain will be always all real numbers. The range will be a minus b to a plus b. Thus, it's going to be from negative 1 to 7 closed. It's bounded. We have the maximum r value happens when theta equal 180, and it's going to be 7. And the minimum when theta equals 0, and it's going to be negative 1. The symmetric always on x-axis because of x, uh, cosine theta, there will be no asymptote. It's continuous, as I said, bounded. And we graph it, as you can see. We take into consideration the two y-intercepts will be a equal 3 and a equal 3 down or negative 3. The x-intercept will be the absolute value of a minus b, which is 1, and a plus b, which is 7. And that's it. Okay, let's analyze the given graph, and it is an inner loop, Limousin that opens to the left, thus it consists of r equal a minus b cosine theta. Now, uh, from the y-intercept, we can figure out that a equal 2. Now, we go to the maximum y-intercept, which consists of a plus b, and you can guess 9 is a result of 2 plus what? Plus 5. This, this is the shape, and then you can continue the rest of analyzing this equation. Okay, analyze r equal 2 plus 4 sine theta, and now we start dealing with sine theta. This basically, it's a lemison that goes to, the, to up. Uh, of course, if we divide a by b, it is half less than 1. And as I said, because of sine, it will be a lemison that opens or that goes in the upper direction. Now we start uh, talking about that about uh, that it's bounded always. The domain should be always real or real numbers. The range should uh, be from a minus b to a plus b, and it's going to be from minus two to six. And by the way, that will give you a clear idea about the minimum and maximum r value. The minimum r value is going to be negative two, and it will happen at uh, theta. Let me see because we're talking about at theta equal uh, uh, 270, the maximum r value will be 6, and it will happen at theta equal 90. Because of sine, it is symmetric on the y-axis, and it's bounded, by the way, and continuous as well. Now, we graph it. We will highlight the two x-intercepts and the two y-intercepts. Uh, the two y-intercepts a minus b and it's going to be 2 minus 4 from negative 2 up to 6 uh, a plus b and now the a intercepts uh, the x-intercepts are the a one to the right and one to the left Now we will go analyze r4 minus 9 sine theta it's an inner loop lemason because of the value 4 over 9 less than 1 because of sine uh, and minus b equal uh, negative 9, it opens down. It's below x-axis. The domain or real numbers. The range from a minus b to a plus b. So it's going to be from negative 5 to 13. Uh, because of sine, it is symmetric on the y-axis. The maximum r value will be r equal 13 when the angle equal 270 degree. And the minimum negative 5, r equal negative 5, and angle uh, at angle equal 90. Now we highlight the y-intercepts and the x-intercepts. The x-intercept, the first, uh, sorry, the y-intercept a minus b, thus negative 5, a plus b to 13. And at the x-intercept, it's the a, it's bounded and continuous. Write the function of the graph below, and as you can see, it's an inner loop limousin that goes towards uh, down, thus it is r equal a minus b sine theta. 
A is very easy. It's the x-intercept. This the function initially r equals six minus p sine theta. Now we go to the maximum y-intercept that comes from a plus b, and we ask ourselves what is a plus six equal fifteen, and the answer is nine. Then you analyze it as you've been taught before. Uh, another thing, limousons they have no asymptotes. Analyze r equal 2 plus 2 cosine theta, and in this case, a equal b equal 2, this, their division is 1, and you're dealing with a cardiac limousine or a heart that goes to the right side because of positive 2 cosine theta. The domain is already in number. The range is from a negative b to a plus b from 0 to 4, symmetric on the x-axis because of the cosine and maximum r value is r equal 4 at theta equals 0 and minimum r value is 0 at r equal um, sorry at theta equal 180 and check the x y intercept as you can see in front of you another example r equal 4 minus 4 sine theta it's a cardio that goes towards down because of minus 4 sine theta and in this case, we will say, okay, uh, the domain is all reals, all real numbers, as we know. The range goes from interval A minus B to A plus B. This my expectation for the range is going to be from 0 to 8. Uh, it is symmetric on the y-axis because of sine theta. And the maximum R value, you can predict it's going to be 8 and it will be at angle theta equal 270 degree. The minimum R value is going to be 0 and it's at theta equal 90 degree. Of course, there is no asymptote. It's continuous. It is bounded. And check the x, y intercept as you can see. Write the function for the graph below. And the equation, you can see it's a heart that goes towards up. This we expect it is r equal a plus a sine theta. Now to find a, it is the x-intercept, and apparently it's a 3 from the graph. This the function is a 3 plus 3 sine theta. Now the domain is all real numbers. The range goes from 0 to 6. You have maximum r value 6 at theta equal 90. The minimum r value at 0 when theta equal 270. Symmetric on y-axis, it is bounded, uh, no asymptote, uh, blah, 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 that's it. The following example talks about a dimpled limousin. Uh, a is a 3, B is 2, A divided by B is 1.5, thus it is between 1 and 2. Uh, the same analysis, the same kind of domain, the same kind of range, symmetric on x-axis because we have cosine theta, maximum r value as you can see, minimum r value, it's the same, but all what will make a difference for you, the graphing, you don't have an inner loop, you don't have a heart, you graph it as you can see. Now we take another example. Uh, a equals 6, B equals 3, and when we divide them, it's 2. Thus, we are dealing with the last type of limousine, which is convex. The rest of analysis, domain, range, symmetric, asymptote, bounded, it is the same. All what you have to do, just a graph it uh, according to the x, y intercepts that you're receiving. And it will be somehow like a semicircle. It will be, it looks like a circular, but not a perfect circle. Polar equations of roses. In this section, I want to highlight the general equations forms of a roses. We have r equal a cosine in theta and r equal a sine in theta. n is just a number. Now, if n is odd, then the number of leaves or the petals is n leaves. Now, if n is even, then you have in total leaves 2 times n. Uh, not that only, uh, the length of the petal or the distance between the tip of the leaf and the pole, the origin, is a. It starts with analyzing r equal 3 cosine 2 theta. You will notice, first of all, that n equal 2 and a equal 3. It means that the length of the leaf is a equal 3. 
and the number of petals or the number of leaves is two times two because n is even and we have in total four leaves now because the function is cosine you need to start from the zero angle first of all to know the positions of the leaves you will take 360 divided by the number of petals and you will discover that every 90 degree you will have one leaf thus because it's cosine i'm gonna start from zero then add 90 then 180 then 270 and I will graph rows with the length 3 as you can see. In the coming example, we will deal with sine. This analyze r equal 3 sine 4 theta. We notice that a again is a 3. This is the length of the petal or the leaf. Uh, n equal 4 again it's even this the total number of leaves you have to multiply by 2 you will have 8 leaves in total of course the domain will be all real numbers we don't forget it all all reals the range will be from minus a to a as you can see in front of you because of the presence of sign this uh, function is going to be a symmetric on y-axis but you need to keep in mind if n is even then the function will be symmetric on x-axis y-axis and origin bounded because you will have a rose and you can see the maximum r value is the absolute value of a which is a three now to graph it because it's a sign we need to be careful first of all to uh, uh, our first leaf will start by uh, 90 divided by n i'm just waiting until the second slide will appear in front of you so that you can understand how we graph it now again it's a sine function this the location of my first leaf will be 90 divided by n if i divide it 90 by 4 i will end up having 22.5 degree now this is the location of the first leaf now the positions or that like between each angle and another angle we have to divide the 360 by the total number of leaves which will be 45 degree now this i will start the graphing i will make sure my first leaf will be 22.5 then i have to add another 45 to create the second leaf which will be 67.5 then i will add 45 plus 67.5 and I will create the third leaf, and it will be about 112.5, and etc. And if you do like this, you will end up having eight uh, leaves in total. Keep in mind, roses also, they are bounded functions without uh, asymptote. There are no asymptotes. I want to highlight the importance of deciding whether n even or odd. If n is even, then regardless the function sine or cosine, it will be symmetric on all uh, axes, x, y, and origin. But if n is odd, then if you're dealing with cosine, then it's symmetric on uh, x axis. If you're dealing with sine, then it is symmetric on y axis. You need to keep this in mind. Analyze r equal 4 sine 5 theta. A equal 4, thus the length of the leaf will be 4. N equal 5, and it's odd number, thus the total number of leaves will be 5. Now, the location of the first leaf will be 90 divided by N, and in this case, it's going to be 18 degree. Now, every, we divide 360 by the number of leaves, every 72 degree, you will have a new leaf. Okay? Now we keep in mind that it's continuous domain or real number. Just let me just highlight how I graph it. The first leaf 18, then I will add 72, 90, then I will add another 72, 162, and then I will start graphing the leaf and I will make sure that the length of each leaf is uh, gonna be four, which is A. Again, this is a bounded function, no, uh, no asymptote. The maximum R value is four, uh, what else we, we speak of the domain is all real numbers uh, continuous I believe I said it and the range from negative 4 to 4 
um, because it's sine. And n odd, it's only symmetric on y axis. Uh, last example, analyze r equal 5 cosine 3 theta, and a equal 5, thus the length of the leaf is 5, n equal 3, it's odd, thus the total number of leaves will be the same, 3. Because it's cosine, my first leaf will be always at angle 0. Um, uh, I will divide 360 by 3, thus every 120 degree I should have a new leaf. Uh, this function is symmetric on x-axis only because it's cosine and n is odd. Now you can see how I am uh, deciding the places of the leaves. Keep in mind again the length is 5. Again it's continuous, maximum r value is 5, a range from negative 5 to 5, uh, blah blah blah, etc. You can read it by yourself. Spiral of Archimedes. I will highlight in this section the general form uh, or the general formula which is r equal theta. Now you need to keep in mind there is no maximum r value. Uh, it is always symmetric on y axis. The domain and the range they are the same it's, and they are all reals. Uh, it is a continuous one because it looks like a spiral this it's unbounded and it doesn't have any asymptote. There are two possible scenarios for the spiral. If theta is positive, then it will go counterclockwise, as you can see it, and this is the shape of the spiral. Now, the second case, if theta is less than uh, zero, it's negative one, then you will go clockwise, and the shape of the spiral will be like this. We'll do only one example. Analyze r equal three theta, and you can see it's a positive angle. Thus, my expectation, we should go counterclockwise. And in order to graph it, I prefer if I will build up a table, uh, I will give uh, values for theta, then I will find the three theta and then connect them on the polar coordinates. Keep in mind that it's continuous, not bounded, no asymptotes, no maximum R value, and the domain and the range, they are uh, the same, which is all real numbers, all, all reals. Now I just want you to see how I graph it in details according to the table. As I said, I'm so, I assume certain angles, I'm replacing uh, three, like I will assume angle 45, then I will do three theta, etc. Then I will graph it on the coordinates. The lemon skate curve and it looks like infinity. The first type of the lemon skate curve is uh, the equation r square equal a square cosine 2 theta. And in this case, the infinity shape will be located on the x axis. Uh, you need to know that it's um, uh, continuous on its own domain, uh, it's uh, bounded. Um, I can see no asymptote. When you solve it, make sure that r equal, uh, this, uh, this, uh, like you take square root of both sides and you end up r equal a square root cosine two theta. Uh, as I said, it's bounded, no continuous, uh, sorry, continuous, no asymptote. It's, it's uh, continuous on its domain. I had to highlight this, no asymptote. Uh, the domain, no maximum r value as well, okay? And then going, uh, I will go to the domain and range, let me see. I believe the range is going to be from negative A to A. Of course, this function is symmetric on x-axis, y-axis origin. You need to know this information. 
The domain is somehow lengthy, though sorry, you have to memorize it. Second required luminous uh, curve from you is R square equal as A square sine 2 theta. Uh, and it looks like, uh, like this shape. Uh, the same properties, the same everything. This, that was the end of the lesson. Thank you for watching.